Hello. All right. So here is Survey Monkey. This is me logged in. Um, here's some previous surveys that you might check out. This is an example of one that was done in 2011. Um, this was a review between a few different games. So this was used for a different purpose. So you've got people who are reviewing it. Three people in here in the review group. This is page one. This is side-by-side -side review sheet. So this is some people filling in some answers. There's some drop-downs with one to ten. All of these different questions, and then eventually page three, which has a space for additional comments, and um, that's it, right? It's as simple as that. If you want to preview this, you click the preview survey button, and it shows you that people will only see page one initially, so then they can say uh, A and B and C as names, or they can say it was like Mark and Yogi and Bear, and then we click next, and so these three people are now reviewing this, and then they have to choose stuff from here as it's been pre-designed. Now, SurveyMonkey will give you um, 10 questions in your questionnaire, in your survey, for free. And you can basically have it up there and ask people lots of stuff. Once you ask them things, and they can go like to page 3, this is where they can type in uh, an actual answer for some of these things. If you want to give them lots of space to type, they can just have a text field to type stuff in. So that's one example of it. Now, the ones that we have on here uh, let's look at Connor. So you have a look at his game, and that's the game, and that's awesome. Then you look at the survey. This is the survey. So he says, this is the million dollar question, would you pay a dollar for this game? And if you say yes, then that's a good sign. If you say no, you want to say, if you said no, what would it take for you to reconsider? Like, what would it take for you to actually pay a dollar for this game? This is why it's a package deal. These two questions go together, and they're a wonderful combination of things. Uh, what did you enjoy about the game? Is talking about the fun aspects of it. How would you rate the game out of 10? That's, an, that's a subjective number. I don't know how useful that is, but it's there. How fast is the game, in your opinion? Uh, 0 being snail race and 10 being need for speed. So, again, being able to kind of compare things and look at what need for speed speed is. And was the game aesthetic pleasing? A couple of options here. Yes, absolutely, or yuck. Anything specific that looked bad? Did you have fun? And did you see the dancing bear? So did you get to round 100? Uh, which means people go, oh my god, I need to go play this game some more. And they're back into playing his game to get to see the dancing bear. Now, at round 100, if you get there, yeah. So when you look at this, when you set up your survey, you get this button here, which is basically collect response. In the collect response, you create a web link. So you basically go add a collector. It says, what do you want to do? You say, I want to have a web link. It's going to be for my RPS game. You click next step, and it generates a unique link. That unique link you email to me, because then I get to put it onto here. So when someone clicks this, it pops up with your survey, and it says Eddie's survey, this is Alex's survey, and it pops up with the correct survey. So you need to email me that, as well as email me your game. So I need the game, and I need your survey, uh, link together ideally. One of the key things that you need to make sure in the settings for the survey is that you have uh, allow multiple responses set to yes. Mostly because we are at the college here and here we have one IP address, which means if Matt answers one of the questions here, that system locks it down. It thinks that we've already had a respondent from this computer because this computer is all of these computers using the one internet connection. So you need to make sure that yes, allow multiple responses per computer so that it allows all of us to answer it. Otherwise, you're only going to get one response and you're going to wonder why did no one fill out my survey? And that's not because they didn't want to, it's just because the system didn't let them. And that's because you didn't tick this thing here. So it's an important one. The rest of these, you just leave them on defaults um, because they'll they're all set to the correct thing. Now, once you're done with one of these surveys, you can go to Analyze Results, and this will happen probably uh, after the holidays. You'll be able to see how many results you've gotten from everyone. You'll click the anal Analyze Results page, and you'll see what people said. So you'll see what did they say for question one, and you'll see what did they say for question two, how many as a percentage said that. You'll get nice graphs, you'll get results that are meaningful, and you'll be able to compare these to get a bit of information about what did people actually say or do or, or like or dislike about my uh, or specific aspects of my game which is what you want to do so all of that stuff's in there you click the create survey button to get started once you've logged in 
Don't click upgrade, you don't need upgrade, you use the basic free account to just make one of these. You create a new survey, you call it whatever you want to, I'm going to call RPS. You select the category and just say it's consumer feedback. You click continue, you get into the, hey, now that we've got this set up, please give this a title. So you can edit the title and instead of RPS you can say, you know, rock, paper, scissors. Um, and then you can say, yep, I don't want to apply that, and yes, it's a consumer feedback one. And then you go, hey, I'm ready to put stuff on page one. And you could say, please tell me your name. So you could say, ask question. Um, I'm going to add a question here, and it's going to be basically, uh, please tell me your name. Right? And then here you can say, it's actually a comment essay box. I want them to be able to write whatever they want to, and require answer to this question. Say no, so that it's optional, so if people don't want to, uh, it won't be forcing them to enter like ABC or Yogi Bear in there. So let, let them have that as an open one. And then you click save and add next question. Right? So then you've got the next question on this page. Now if you click save and close, sorry, if you click cancel now, because I did that. If you, if you did save and close or you click cancel, you go and see the question you have. You can go back to edit it. Or you can add another page, which I would recommend. So if you're asking them personal stuff, keep that on the front page and then put another page in. And so this will be page two, which means all the questions that you'll add in here will be on a separate page for them. And here you can have all of your seven questions. Once they've answered the seven questions, or maybe the six, you can have the open-ended questions such as, tell me your thoughts or general comments about the game on page three. Wherever they stop filling out the survey, you will still get results. So if they go and enter page one and then they get to page two and they don't answer it, you'll still have all the entry for page one that they put in. So it's very valuable to split stuff onto pages rather than putting all of your 10 questions on one page because it allows people to progress and if they jump out or they get distracted, you at least get some data from them as compared to no data. So you want to be able to segment your questions in a way that makes sense. Um, and again, once you're done, you can also pick the theme. So you can say, oh, I wanted to have a, a, a custom theme or I want to have a vintage theme. And you can basically pick colors and customize it and, and do some fancy stuff that way. Um, there's limits in the free account, but you can do some cool things there. Once you're happy with all the questions in there, you click collect responses, you make a web link, you call it whatever you want in here so that you know what it is. Um, and, and you might say RPS uh, version 1 because this is for your version 1 testing. You'll do this again for version 2. And then you copy this URL and you email that to me with your game. Making sure that in the change settings option here you click yes, allow multiple responses from uh, this computer, otherwise you're not going to get valid responses from people on the campus because they're all using the same IP address, you're only going to get one and you don't want that. So once you've done that, save settings uh, and then click analyze results and wait uh, for people to actually fill it out. So if there's no responses, it'll say this server has no responses, uh, you can go and check again or you can buy some responses, you can actually pay them money to get people to fill out your survey. Now this isn't useful for you guys because it, you would need to include the link to the game. Uh, if you do want to use this, make sure the link to the game is there and on page one you say, please play this game first and then click continue to answer some questions about it. And then it's worthwhile doing this. But, but I don't want you guys spending money on this because I don't think you're going to get much uh, value from that in comparison to getting everyone else who's studying right now, giving you feedback. I think you'll get enough value from that for version 2 anyway. Um, and then, yeah, you've got your summaries here, and you can download this stuff, or you can view it here, which is really useful. And that, hopefully, gives so you enough to do. In the collect, collect responses, yep. is it web link? Did you want yes, so that? when you do add collector, you click web link, web link, and then you just name it something that's meaningful to you, because you'll see the web link on the list here. So if you look, that's RPSV1. And you can have multiple web links because you could actually put a link on your Facebook. So you could make a Facebook link, you could put a Twitter link, and you could put a website link. So you would know where people are actually filling out the survey. So you can have multiple uh, URLs to the same survey to allow you to know which, which, which mediums are actually effective at engaging people to go and fill out the survey. Uh, which is also important so you know where to spend your time um, in eliciting information from people. And that's it. And then once once you're happy, uh, you can click delete if you ever want to uh, close the collector so people won't be able to use that link anymore while keeping the survey open. 
or you can basically go and um, you know close the survey off if you want so you can go back to your servers and, and close it off so it no longer collects information. So if you only wanted to find out what people thought of something a, a week after its release, let's, let's say you were doing a survey for a movie, a movie just came out, you only want to know the initial survey results, so you just close it after seven days so people, even if they have the link and even if they know about it, they can't see it. And that's, that's about it. So please have a go at that and, and email me a link to that um, with your questions. You can always edit the questions after you send me the link, so don't stress about getting the questions perfect. All I need is the link, so I need you to set it up with one question, email me the link so I can set up this page and link to your survey. Because then when you keep changing and modifying your survey, this link will still be the same. So I, need, I just need that so I can set this page up. Um, and at the same time, you guys can go play all of these games and look at their surveys just by clicking that link on the Design 2 page, uh, which will just jump you here so you can, you can check that out.